Namaste to everyone. Good morning. Welcome to this morning session. Namaste, Sir Miladidi. Namaste, Ganesh, Sir. Ji, namaste. Namaste, Tara Ji. Sabhi ko namaste. Good morning and welcome. Namaste, Ganesh Ji. Namaste. Ji. Namaste, Ganesh Ji. Namaste, Sir Miladidi. Namaste, Tara Prasanna Bhaiya. And all my co-explorers. One thing I want a little bit clarification in the exercise one that when I am able to understand the incompleteness, the relationship, harmony, and coexistence. So, at what completeness indicates? something as applicable to the whole existence. So this coexistence, I am able to see for the whole existence. The harmony, the relationship, I am able to see for the whole existence. Then it is seeing it in completeness. So if you look at the existence, there are two basic realities. One is the space and the other is the units in space. So if I'm able to see that this coexistence of the unit in space applies everywhere for all units in space. It applies for me as a self, it applies for the body, my body, it applies for other body and like that it applies for every unit. And in order to see this, I have to see the units in space and the units submerged in space. I have to see the activities in space, the gross activities the subtle activities, the subtle most activities. So when I'm able to see all this, and I can see that, yes, every activity, whether it is gross or subtle, is submerged in space. It is coexistence in space. Then I'm able to see that, that this coexistence applies to the whole existence. That is the meaning of seeing this coexistence in completeness. Similarly, when I'm able to see that every activity in space, in existence, is in harmony and is in relationship with every other unit, then I'm able to see this harmony and relationship in its completeness. So that is the meaning of completeness. At least I need to see that this coexistence, this harmony, this relationship applies to all that I am immediately connected to. For example, it applies for me as a self. It applies for every activity of myself. It applies for the body. It applies for me as a human being, you know, coexistence of self and body. So, and it applies for other human beings with whom I, with whom I am interacting. So, at least that much is very necessary. Then I have to see that it applies for the physical facilities that I am using around me. The trees, the plants, the house, the you know, all this. So all that I'm interacting with, at least I should be able to see that, you know, it is in coexistence, harmony and relationship. If I'm able to see this, then I'm always, you know, in a state of harmony and happiness within. There is no contradiction. There is no struggle. 
there is no opposition yes when when can i ensure that the completeness is there no, this is what i'm saying when you are able to see this that you know it applies for every unit in existence right this coexistence applies for the whole existence this harmony relationship applies for the whole existence then you can say that you are able to see in its completeness yeah otherwise you have to keep working on it so what are the you said about the uh, subtle subtler and subtlest activities of the, in the space yeah. how can you understand that by observing it directly see for example yeah before we thought that we are just the body right which is a very gross activity mm -hmm. it is an unit which is very gross right mm -hmm. then we started studying ourselves as a human being and we found that we are not just the body but we are coexistence of the body and the self so how did you come to know by direct observation so we were able to observe that yes self is one unit body is another unit right it is one set of activity self body is another set of activity isn't it so how did you come to know by way of observing it so we are observing it and we are seeing it directly then we looked at the self and started observing the self and we found that self is not one single activity okay there are all activities taking place in the self so we started observing that that is what we were doing in exercise 1 okay yes so we were trying to observe the imagination initially we were not able to see it because it was subtle and we were used to see only gross activities but we continued working on it we can you know with our awareness we started observing the imagination and slowly we were able to see it you know to begin with we could see the imagination as a whole you know some feel of it we could get then we were able to see our thought then we continued paying attention and observing it so then we were able to see the feeling which is guiding the thought right so we could see that this feeling is something different this thought is something different so there are different types of activities which is part of the activity of the self which is a gross activity now with as compared to the feeling as compared to the thought so the self is also made of these activities so that we could see right yes then so, we also you know kept observing by our awareness through our awareness from the place of the observer pure observer and we found that these feelings are decided by our sanskar which is another set of feelings another set of activities and i as an observer can observe this sanskar this preconditioning this you know acceptances which are deciding on this feeling so now we can see five different types of activity the pure observer one the sanskar to the feeling the thought and the expectation now these are the five different activities which are taking place in the self so self is also not the subtle most activity there are subtler activities within the self right so this is what we keep doing isn't it so now when you start working with the self with the self and working with this pure observer 
then you realize that this is the subtle most activity. But we yes. can keep ourselves open. That, okay, there could be some subtler than this. But at least this observer is a very subtle activity. And when you come, keep working on it, you will realize that it's the subtle most activity. It cannot be further, you know, um, divided. So like that, we are working. Yeah. Thank you. And second question. Yeah, I mean, uh, I find it difficult to see the two different realities completely different, means self and the body. I yeah. think there is some link and uh, I am not able to find a clear-cut differentiation between these two. Yeah, we are not saying that there is no link. What we are saying is that there is a link between the two through space, but they are two different set of activities. Self is one set of activity, body is another set of activity, right? Mm -hmm. And they are related to each other through space. So they are in coexistence and there is a relationship between the self and the body. But they are not put together one unit. Right? That is all that we are saying. That self is one set of activity, body is another set of activity. Their nature is different. And there is a coexistence between the self and the body. And the self, by its decision, is transacting some information with the body. It is giving some information to the body by way of some in the, you know, <coughs> instruction. And it is reading some sensation from the body some information from the body by way of sensation. This transaction is going on. Okay. So there is a relationship between the self and the body. But the important thing is that these are two different units and they are of different nature. The self is of the nature of consciousness and the body is of the nature of material. And because their nature is different, therefore there are need, their needs are different and their you know, fulfillments are different. Their activities are also different. So we should understand both of them as two different units with different nature, with different needs, different activity. And then only we can really identify their needs and fulfill their needs. Otherwise, we are in confusion. We think that if we fulfill the need of the body, the need of the self will be fulfilled. That is what we have been doing, you know, most of the time. So we think if there is enough physical facility, then we'll be able to feed the body, we'll be able to protect the body, and then I will be happy. Now this myth that if I have enough physical facility and if I can nurture my body, then I will be happy at the level of self. That is a confusion. That does not take place, right? So to begin with, when you don't have enough to eat, Yes, physical facility is very important, right? And when you are able to feed your body, you feel satisfied that, okay, I am able to take care of my body. But then what? Does it lead to continuity of happiness at the level of self? If not, then what? What to do? That is the question. So if you ask whether physical facility is required or not, yes, it is required. It is required for taking care of the body. Is that enough? No. Relationship is important. 
understanding is also important. All that we have been exploring, isn't it? Yes. And all these are important because this self is not fulfilled by the physical facility alone. Self has a body associated with it and therefore it wants to take care of the body and in order to take care of the body, physical facility is required. But that alone, the physical facility alone is not going to fulfill the self. For the self, this understanding, this feeling is important. Like this need to understand this coexistence, harmony and relationship in completeness, it is not the need of the body. Body has nothing to do with it. Yes. Whether you understand or you don't understand, right? The body has, is nurtured when it is given <coughs> whatever is required for nurturing of the body in terms of physical facility. But that is not fulfilling for you as a self. So they are in relationship, but they are two different types of units. Their types are different. Their nature is different. And therefore, I need to understand both of them separately. Mm -hmm. And that is what we are trying to do. We are trying to do this in exercise one. That is, we are first trying to understand this self, independent of the body. Then we are doing exercise two to understand the self in relationship with the body. So purposely we decided to take the self first, okay, so that we can observe it and see that it is, you know, there, independent of the body, as an unit. Then we are trying to see that it is a unit in the relationship with the body. So both are important to see the self as an unit which is not dependent on the body. And then see the self which is an unit in relationship with the body. Then we will see the human being which is coexistence of self and body in relationship with other human beings, in relationship with other units of nature. So it is true that it takes time because we have been thinking that we are the body. We have been thinking that we are with the body and because of the body. And if the body is not there, we are not there. So all these preconditionings, all these assumptions have been there and it takes time to make the direct observation and see for yourself right, as to what it is. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes. Namaste, Bhaiya. Namaste, Samila Didi. Namaste to all co explorers. We are development, we are in, in the phase of development of exercises. Um, which will go up to the Vyapak. Yeah. I explored about a spiritual psychology. And this uh, uh, discussion about exercises up to Vyapak led me to explore the opposite age that whether we are, we are uh, in the process of de uh, developing exercises to explore this uh, spiritual psychology. If yes, then also I want I want to uh, volunteer myself, and if not, uh, if 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 this process is not going on, then also I'll request to see the opportunities if this can done, because we have whatever I have uh, explored about a spiritual psychology, this is uh, also a holistic approach to healing, which includes the integration of mind, body, and a spirit into one's daily life. Uh, in a spiritual psychology too, uh, uh, finally, a uh, power as human beings uh, uh, be look for, wisdom derived from knowledge gained through the human experiences rather than facts drawn from uh, school books or Google. Uh, actually, uh, from last two years, 
I have felt some uh, unusual changes inside me, and these changes are something positive ones. I have regained my strength, my personal uh, means. I want to tell. I have felt some ascension into my uh, capabilities. I have uh, explored myself to work beyond my uh, earlier. Uh, um, limitation or whatever and my result uh, in the my professional world or my uh, um, research my I am doing PhD I have gained I have explored uh, experienced some positive changes and this happen, happened after encountering with um, with uh, a person who may say a person and I I thought why it's happening so why it's happening. So I explored uh, uh, this and I came to some terminologies uh, uh, and those terminologies are, are under this uh, spiritual psychology. Later on, I also uh, uh, explored that this uh, spiritual psychology pro uh, also is also a, a way of uh, mental mental healing towards mental illness so i am uh, i feel like all these are kind of interconnected things um, now if if i go back to my life i'm under treatment for mental illness bipolar disorder since almost three decades now when i look back at my life i am able to see connectedness of each and everything i feel that whatever I realized in my life was for a reason. If that has not happened, then perhaps the subsequent steps have not would not have occurred, and that subsequent efforts if have not occurred, then perhaps I would not have been talking to you. Everything has been interconnected. I came to the this changes inside me, which I told you that. I explored uh, two years later. I was just in dilemma. What's happening inside me? Why it's in happening inside me? I and I came here to heal myself. So everything is interconnected. Vaya, please enlighten me in terms of this spiritual psychology. Yeah, in fact, what we are saying is that everything is in coexistence, harmony, and relationship. In very simple words, right? And this relationship, harmony, and coexistence applies to every unit in existence. Now, this is being observed and understood and lived with by many people right, in the past. And whatever they have observed and understood and lived with, they have shared it with other people in their own terms, you know, in their own terminology, in their own language, with their own expressions, right? So the reality is same, the existence is same, and this coexistence, harmony, and relationship is, you know, there, working with every unit in existence, but it has been expressed in different language, in different terminology, in different ways, right, by different people. If we understand this reality, this existence in completeness, what um, Devi Kipaji was asking, uh, then we will see that, you know, all these realized people have been talking about the same thing in their own language, in their own terminology, their own expressions. So, uh, if you look at spiritual psychology with this understanding, you will see that a psychology which is working with the human self, right? If it is working only at the level of imagination, or it is working at the level of imagination plus the sanskar, the preconditioning. 
then it is one type of psychology. So if you look at the modern psychology, you know, with all its details, you will find that it is working with the self, but it is working in a sense, a major part of it is working with the imagination part of it. Right. The imagination part of which you are aware or not aware. And sometime in some of the cases, it is also trying to penetrate into the sanskar, into our preconditioning. So when you are talking about the conscious mind, you are talking about the imagination part of it. When you are talking about the subconscious mind in the modern psychology, you are talking about the imagination and sometimes you are also talking about the sanskar which is working at the base of this imagination. So this is not sufficient as far as the self is concerned. Working with this much is not sufficient. In fact, it does not lead to solution. It only leads to observation and analysis of the problems that we are working with at the level of self. It does not give you the solution, clear-cut solution, that given all these issues, problem with the self, what do I do? So, if you keep observing the self and understanding the self, you would realize that all these activities are there in the self, but at, the, at a deeper level, there is this activity of pure observer, which is there and which can observe all these activities. It can also evaluate all those activities and at not get affected by all these activities. And by way of observing these at lower activities and evaluating them, that itself starts leading to purification of these lower activities, which includes sanskar and the imagination. So this is a very interesting thing, that if you keep investigating into the self, you'll be able to see this observer, pure observer, which is a part and parcel of the self, and which has the capacity to observe the lower activity, evaluate the lower activity, and at not get affected by it. So what we are doing in exercise one is essentially trying to hit at that you know, pure observer. So I mentioned yesterday itself that by working on exercise one and write the step one of exercise one, we are trying to place ourselves at the level of pure observer. So when we say be aware, Observe your imagination and don't react. If you put these three things together, you ultimately have to be at the level of pure observer, otherwise you will start reacting. So if you are at the level of sanskar, at the level of preconditioning, you are likely to react. If you are at the level of imagination, you are likely to react. Only when you are observing from the place of pure observer, that you can observe, evaluate, and at not get affected by it and not react to it. So we are trying to, right in the first step, we are trying to get to this pure observer. And then from there, that pure observer, we are working on other steps. For example, step two and three, we are observing the imagination, the feeling, the thought from that place of pure observer. And we are evaluating whether these feelings are natural and leading to happiness or they are unnatural and leading to unhappiness. So this observation as well as evaluation, I'm doing from the place of pure observer. And if I do that, I'm not affected by it. This pure observer is in its 
you know original state and not affected by this observation or by evaluation so if i am there i am in harmony within i am in a state of happiness within at the level of pure observer and this is not disturbed by lower activities of the self so this pure observer is what is being called as spirit so when you try to understand the spirit that is the meaning of it this pure observer which is able to observe all the lower activity which is able to observe things outside also it is observing it is evaluating and not getting affected at and if you see now because it is able to evaluate correctly that means at the base of it this pure observer has the knowledge of the reality so like if you ask what is naturally acceptable to you feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition you are able to give answer right yes. so when you are observing at the level of pure observer the answer is very simple feeling of relationship so this pure observer has the knowledge of what is right therefore you are able to get the right answer so this pure observer is what is called as spirit in other you know some of the term, uh, kind of systems and you can now see that if you are operating at the level of pure observer then from there you can look at the lower activities of the self evaluate them right and remain unaffected by them but when you have done the evaluation of this lower activity it is clear what is right and what is not right in the lower activity so that clarity itself starts purifying the lower activities of the self now if you look at the problems that you have the psychological problem what we call they are at the level of lower activities of the self or at the level of pure observer Mm-hmm. where is it what do you think lower activities uh, yeah. in work and be in the form of work and behavior perhaps no work and behavior is an expression of this activity in the self so problem with the work and behavior is not really the problem this expression of this activity of the self is coming out as behavior so that is not the real problem the problem is is in the okay, self it's in self yes 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 huh. and it is in the lower activity of the self hmm. so either there is problem Thoughts. at the level of samskara your preconditioning your assumption hmm. or there is problem at the level of imagination yes ha huh. those teacher those what is yeah problem is not at the level of pure observer because pure observer has the understanding or the knowledge of what is right and what is not right okay mm. so if there are problems at the level of you know lower activities of the self how do you solve it by awakening my uh, upper half means be, be upper block contemplation understanding realization yeah and ultimately it will come out that by operating at the level of pure observer okay mm. i can see all the lower activities and evaluate them mm. if i do that the purification of these lower activities of sanskar of imagination feeling the thought all that purification will automatically take place yeah thank you yeah so now if i am able to set this lower activities in order in accordance with coexistence harmony and relationship which is right then my problem will be solved mm. isn't it yeah yeah 
and this bipolar disorder that you are suffering from mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can understand that you have two sets of sanskar or imagination mm -hmm. which are in opposition to each other mm -hmm. and you are not aware of both of them mm -hmm. yes by being at the level of pure observer you can start observing your sanskar and your imagination and you will be able to see both of them mm. right and you will be able to evaluate them mm. and they will get purified mm. so when they are purified there is no opposition left mm. because one set of your reconditioning and your imagination is purified then another set is purified and both of them are in line with coexistence harmony and relationship mm. therefore there is no contradiction of course yes therefore there will be no polar disorder mm. so it will automatically get sorted out mm. and this you must be feeling that your problems are getting sorted out as you are going through this exercise 1 and 2 yeah we are very to be so that is what we are saying you know we are working for the solution mm. and not trying to just get rid of the problem if you mm. work for the solution the problems will automatically get solved mm. yes yeah thank you yes thank you very much so keep in touch with uh, manoranjan okay He's okay deeply involved in this mm -hmm. very sincerely he and his wife both namaste didi namaste ganesh sir namaste ji. namaste sabhi ko uh, my question is uh, when i am reading the sensation and associating meaning to it yeah i am associating based on assumption or understanding slowly uh, associating meaning by understanding is improving to uh, this exercise my reaction to sensation from physiochemical changes or sensation from within the body is decreasing so i am giving meaning to this sensation with understanding but my reaction to sensation from others is coming back again and again so uh, i am aware that i have to work on the feeling of relationship so i am working on this but it's coming back again and again so where i have to put more effort if you can guide me that will be helpful yeah so this uh, coming back again and again if you look at it overall when you are working with this exercise 1 and 2 this reaction is increasing or decreasing or it is remaining the same the frequency is um, means uh, it is decreasing it's not coming regularly uh, but yeah yeah two Compared things to... you can observe one is that the frequency will come down so you will be reacting less oftenly number one number two the period for which you are reacting for one shot that will also come down so if yeah. you are re reacting before right for let's say two hours now it will be you know it is thing so after one hour you realize that this is meaningless and it stops after half an hour after few minutes right after one minute after few seconds like that so what is happening is that lot of it you have accumulated all around you isn't it yes so lot of sanskar lot of preconditioning you have accumulated and with those preconditioning you are looking at things outside and reacting 
so when you keep working with this exercise one and two you keep evaluating your sanskar your preconditioning your assumptions right keep evaluating your imagination your feeling and slowly you are able to evaluate them and they keep getting purified so if that happens yes. right you are becoming every day you know more and more comfortable becoming better and better so we'll have to come continue with the process we have accumulated these sanskars and these imaginations over you know number of you know, a long period if you look at your association with this body some 40 50 years we have been accumulating this and this we have been doing even my our association with this previous body so all that is accumulating so it has to be sorted out slowly so it will take time that is what we are doing isn't it yes bhaiya and avoiding this also not giving the solution and going away from the people uh, where we are not uh, having conducive the environment is also not solving the uh, issue so we have to sort it out and work on our sanskar and our assumptions we have to face and, and observe ourselves hmm. because all these interactions they bring out those sanskar which are not immediately active which are dormant also yes so those four types of sanskar that we have been talking about one is dormant sleeping the second is very weak third is which is diverted fourth is which is active so if you are working with yourself only you realize that you are working with the sanskar which are active but what about the other three right so many of them come out when a, there is a situation which instigates it then you are able to see your feeling you are able to see the sanskar behind it you are able to evaluate both of them so th- like that this cl- you know cleaning process becomes more you know uh, kind of it, it speeds up Away. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We don't have to run away. What we have to do is every time we have to keep working with exercise one, in any situation and in every situation that we are in. So we don't have to run away from the situation, right? We have to be with the situation, interact with the situation, but the center of my being is at the pure observer. all the time we are at the level of pure observer centered around the pure observer from there we are looking at our own activities of sanskar and you know feeling and thought and then while doing all this in exercise 1 which we are working now we are trying to interact with the world outside so i'll sum up that part you know that is what i wanted to sum up but i thought that many people who come in later they will also be you know introduced to this so i'll i had done some part of it yesterday i will just uh, finish the remaining part yesterday i was saying that in exercise 1 in essence what you are doing is you are observing the self by the self mm-hmm. you start with being aware and observing the imagination without reacting so these three conditions put together means that you are at the level of pure observer from there you are looking at the imagination the feeling the thought and you are evaluating it so if you look at step 1 2 and 3 this is what it means observing being at the level of pure observer from there observing the imagination the feeling the thought and evaluating the feeling whether it is natural or unnatural whether it is leading to happiness or unhappiness step 4 and 5 we are trying to observe and see 
that behind this feeling and thought, behind this imagination, there is sanskar which is taking the decision. And then we are trying to observe this sanskar and evaluate this sanskar in step four and five. So basically, we are at the level of pure observer, observing first the imagination, the feeling, the thought in first three steps. Next two steps, we are getting aware of the sanskar, then looking at the sanskar and evaluating the sanskar. So this will lead to the purification of sanskar. And ultimately, what we are doing in step six and seven is that at the level of pure observer, we are trying to see that it is the relationship, harmony, and coexistence, which is the very basis of coexistence, basis of existence. So existence is by way of coexistence, harmony, and relationship, and not otherwise. If we are able to see it at the level of pure observer, and then we are able to look at the imagination, the feeling, and the sanskar, and evaluate them every moment, then we can make sure that my sanskar and my feeling and my thought are in line with relationship, harmony, and coexistence, and not otherwise. If we can do that, then at the level of pure observer, we have seen that it is the relationship, harmony, and coexistence which is the basis of the existence or the rule of the existence. And this is what is naturally acceptable to me also. Therefore, as long as my sanskar and my feelings, my thoughts are in line with relationship, harmony, and coexistence, I am in harmony with him, and therefore I am in a state of happiness. This is what we are doing at step six and seven. So all these seven steps put together will ensure number one, I am at the level of centered around the pure observer. Number two, at the level of pure observer, I am able to see that it is the coexistence, harmony, and relationship which is the basis of existence. And then I am able to evaluate my sanskar, my you know, uh, imagination, my feeling, my thoughts. And by this evaluation, in the light of this relationship, harmony and coexistence, will ensure that all my sanskar and all my feeling and all my thoughts are in line with relationship, harmony and coexistence. And therefore, I am in a state of harmony within, I am in a state of happiness within. This is what we are doing in exercise one, in a sense. Now, with this clarity and this working every moment at the level of self, whenever I consider it important to interact with the world outside, and how, why do I consider it important to work outside? because I have the feeling of relationship and harmony and coexistence with every unit in nature, with every unit in existence. That feeling is already there by way of my operating at the level of pure observer and then setting all my scar and feelings and thoughts in order in accordance with this relationship, harmony and coexistence. So that feeling is already there, feeling of relationship and this feeling of harmony with every unit in existence. Therefore, out of that feeling, I want to interact with the world outside for the fulfillment of that feeling of relationship and harmony. For example, this body is one such unit in existence. I am having this feeling of relationship and feeling of harmony with the body and therefore I want to ensure this fulfillment of relationship and harmony with the body. With this feeling as and when necessary I find I interact with the body. So the basis of interaction with the body 
is not to get something out of the body and get happiness through it that happiness is already there in me through exercise one i have ensured happiness for myself in continuity and with that state of happiness now out of my feeling of relationships and harmony i am interacting with the body so that feeling will remain there i will be in a state of harmony and happiness right and with that sense of responsibility i interact with the body as and when i think it is important to interact for example if i find that you know i need to nurture the body out of my feeling of relationship for the body then i will observe the feeling observe the sensation in the body and decide whether there is a hunger or not so if there is a sensation of hunger i will see that yes the body needs some food needs some nurturing and therefore i decide to nurture the body and i give necessary instruction to the body to go to the kitchen pick up a plate put some food there and eat all these instructions i give to the body now this giving instruction and taking reading some sensation from the body this is the transaction of information with the body so if you look at step 1 2 and 3 of exercise 2 this is what we are trying to see i am there the body is there right. there is coexistence between the two i am one type of reality the body is another type of reality one is of the type of consciousness the other is of the type of material and i am transacting information with the body right so this transaction with the body is in terms of information not in terms of some physical activity or physical thing i am giving some information to the body i am taking some information from the body and both way the decision is mine so as and when i feel it's necessary important i pay attention to the body i read some sensation from the body and depending upon the state of the body i give some instruction to the body i take some decision in myself first and then give some instruction to the body so this is what i am doing in step 1 2 and 3 of exercise 2 now if i am clear about what is happening in me all the time every moment and i am clear about this transaction i am taking with doing with the body sometime as and when necessary then i can see that in all these transactions with the body or anything else outside what is happening really what is happening at the level of body or outside then what is happening at the level of self and then what is happening at the level of body or outside when i respond or react to the situation so that we are trying to study in step 5 and 6 in step 5 and 6 we are trying to understand the whole process that when i am interacting with the body say for example then what is happening what is happening at the level of body what is happening at the level of me the self and then back what is happening at the level of body similarly when i am interacting with anything outside rather than the body for example other human being or some biochemical thing what is happening at the level of that other human being how it is reflected at the level of body then what is happening in me and when i respond or react what is happening at the level of body and what is happening at the level of the other human being all this we are trying to study and if we study this 
then we can see that my interaction with the world outside including the body has an impact on me depending upon what is my sanskar what is my state of being and if my state of being is that i am centered around the pure observer and by observing this sanskar and my feel my feelings i am able to set them in order and all my sanskar and all my feelings and thoughts are in line with harmony relationship and coexistence then i am anyway in a state of harmony and happiness in that case any input coming from outside does not disturb me by any input taking from outside i evaluate the condition of the unit outside with which i am interacting and by evaluating the condition of that outside thing i decide how to fulfill my relationship my harmony with that other thing as far as i am concerned i am in a state of you know harmony and happiness within by way of having the feeling of harmony and relationship so anything outside coming from outside is not disturbing i am in a state of harmony and happiness with that state of harmony and happiness and with that feeling of relationship with the body for example i am now looking at the input which i am collecting from the body for example sensation and i evaluate the condition of the body and with that i decide how to fulfill my feeling of relationship with the body so for example when i read a sensation from the body and find that you know it is a sensation of hunger then i am not disturbed by it i am able to evaluate that yes the body needs some food therefore out of my feeling of relationship i must provide some food to the body and therefore i give necessary instruction to the body to go to the kitchen pick up the food in a plate and then eat all the instruction i give to the body and the body does accordingly similarly if there is some wound some cuts in the body and there is you know some bleeding i don't get disturbed by it i look at this you know i read that sensation of the pain from the body i make this evaluation that there is a cut in the body and it has to be taken care so i put necessary medicine whatever it to be done without myself getting disturbed i remain in a state of harmony and happiness if i am working with this exercise one every moment if i am at the level of pure observer every moment i am looking at my lower activities and evaluating them and thereby there is purification of all these activities then all these situations outside do not disturb me in fact i remain in a stable condition and i respond to this world outside out of my feeling of relationship and harmony with that particular unit so i can take care of the body there is a cut there is a pain the sensation of the pain i read that sensation i evaluate the condition of the body and i decide to apply some medicine in that part of the body so that the body gets healed so this is what is going to happen so this is what we are doing in step 5 and 6 of exercise 2 doing in exercise 2 step 5 and 6 and step 7 is just a preparation for exercise 3 that is to reiterate and leave it for you to observe that while doing all this i am in space the body is in space and through space i am transacting information with the body or transaction in transacting information with anything outside so if you sum up both exercise 1 and 
in a sense, what it is, is that at the level of self, I am at the centered at the level of pure observer. From pure observer, I am observing the lower activities of the self, right? And evaluating whether they are in line with relationship, harmony, or coexistence or not. This is what we are doing in exercise one. And this will lead to purification of the sanskar and the feeling and the thought, the lower activities of the self. And with that purification, I'm in a state of harmony and happiness every moment. By remaining at this state of harmony and happiness every moment within myself, now I am looking at the world outside. And out of my feeling of relationship and harmony with the world outside, I am inter interacting with the world outside by way of transacting information as and when necessary. So this transaction of the information to fulfill the relationship with the body or anything outside is momentary, is there for the time being. As and when I consider it necessary to make that interaction, I do that interaction. That is not continuous. You know, continuous. As far, as far as my state of being is concerned, which I am trying to work out in exercise one, that is going to be continuous. So these two exercises put together, one and two, would mean that I am all the time at the level of pure observer. From there, I am observing my own lower activities, evaluating them. Therefore, therefore, there is a purification of that going on. With that purified state of sanskar and feeling and thought, I'm interacting with the world outside. Right? Not getting disturbed by the input coming from outside, but evaluating the condition of the world outside. And then I can decide, remaining at the level of harmony and happiness, I can decide what to do for the world outside. And with that decision, I pass the necessary information to the world outside. That is how what is happening overall. And this is what we are trying to do in exercise one and two together. So this I thought I will just sum up, you know, leave it for you to reflect on. So that's it. This is, thank you. Thank you, Ganesh, sir, for this enriching session. Thank you, Samudra Didi and all co-explorers.